Hi everyone and welcome to today's video about charging the Polestar 2 with the supplied 3-pin cable. I thought it would be good to make this video just to uh, share my own experiences obviously with an electric car and the Polestar 2 but also to test out something that I haven't done before. Most of my charging is done at home using a 7 kilowatt charger that I've had for a couple of years. It's a pod point. But the car comes with a 3-pin cable and all the EVs come with these. They can be plugged into any socket at home and will charge off your normal mains power supply without having to install any new equipment or new plugs. So there is a time and place for these chargers and I thought it would be good to see what it's like charging the car and how long it will take using this particular plug type. So yeah, if you could like and subscribe down below, that would be great. And uh, yeah, let's check this out and see what it's like charging the Polestar 2 with the 3-pin cable. Okay, so first thing you've got to do when you're charging the Polestar 2 is make sure that you've got your charge screen set correctly. So let's have a look at the options on the charging display in the car. Okay, so this is the charging screen, and you can see here the car is at 64% uh, at the moment. You've got the option here of changing the maximum charge percentage. Now, this is important to do, and I made this mistake on a recent drive, where I left this set to 80%, and I intended to charge to full overnight, and of course it stopped at 80%. So you've got to make sure that you're, you're careful to set this appropriately. Um, Polestar are recommending 90% at the moment to preserve the lifespan of the battery, but obviously you've got to do what you've got to do and set it to what you need. Now down below we've got the option here to get the car to control what um, you know the amps that the car is receiving. Now I don't personally I haven't really fiddled around with that too much because uh, I've got a 32 amp charger at home and so I simply leave it to do its own thing. If I'm not using that then I let the charging point um, determine what I'm going to get and leave the car to it. But it's there for you to change if you wish. Okay so once you've got the charging display set correctly and you're ready to get charging with the three pin cable, it's as simple as plugging it in. So yeah, I'm gonna hop out the car now and uh, let's get this cable plugged in and the charger set up. Oh, just gonna go around here. I've already got the um, cable plugged in to my uh, socket at home. So I'm just gonna pop open the charging port, grab the cable off the floor and uh, get that plugged in. Okay, so we are plugged in now and you should, uh, when it gets, gets going, you should see the light go green. So there we go, we've got a green light and uh, we are all set up to charge. So let's hop back in and uh, have a look at uh, what it shows on display. All right, so um, charging speed we're getting. Let's just uh, have a look at the display and see what's that saying. Okay, so that's the screen right now. Um, it's showing 9 amps and 220 volts, and it's showing zero charging speed. Now, this is a really interesting thing because um, I'm going to just turn off the air conditioning and see what that does. And there we go. It's popped up to 3 miles per hour. So what I found personally is that uh, literally I have barely used this cable, but having plugged it in a little bit before starting to film this video, I noticed that... Uh, it doesn't, um, it can't heat the car and also charge at the same time. So it's one or the other. Basically, if you plug this in and you're trying to precondition the car, you're gonna not be able to charge the battery because it can't do both. Um, so that is kind of an interesting thing to see. So charging speed is showing three miles per hour. Now, that's painfully slow when you think about it. Um, the car is uh, it's a 270 mile car, okay, maybe not 200 miles in winter. We know that, you know, the range is not um, always going to be the same. But uh, you can tell from the initial look at that that that's going to take a long time to charge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just leave the car for a couple of hours and uh, it's still three miles per hour, so very, very slow. I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours and see what happens. 64% is our current battery level. And after a couple of hours of charging, I'm going to come back and uh, see how much that's actually changed and uh, then be able to work out how long you get a full charge from this uh, three pin cable. Okay, so we've done two hours of charging now on the three pin plug and uh, it's really interesting to get back in the car to see what's happened. Um, all I can say is it's really slow. Look at this. You can see the battery level has increased by just 4%. Um, so <laughs> yeah, um, four, well, 4% 4 in two hours, that's just 2% per hour. Um, what is interesting though is that you can see on the screen here, look at that, the range has increased to 170. Now, when I plugged in, look at this before shot, you can see that um, 
it was saying 150 miles. So the range has increased by 20 miles despite the charging speed being just three to four miles per hour. So again, this is something I've highlighted on quite a few of my other videos. The charging speed information is really strange. Like if you if you actually think about that, I'm just looking down at my calculator. If you think about um, the car charging and say, uh, say it's doing two kilowatts. So you're gonna, two kilowatts, that is say a, a worst case scenario, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. That's five miles per hour. It showed three or four, but the range has gone up by 20 in two hours. The range has gone up by 10 miles per hour. So that those, those two don't tie up, do they? So again, but this is interesting. In the OTA update video, I do mention this. The range information um, has been changed in the latest OTA update that is being rolled out on some of the cars. So maybe that will be fixed. But right now, I think for a lot of users, that's confusing because you'll see a difference in the range increase that doesn't actually match up the charging speed number. Um, but let's just say, yeah, it's slow, 2% per hour. Okay, so let's now consider a couple of different scenarios. If you're someone that has to use a three pin charging cable, and we can see from this that we're getting realistically a charge of 2% um, per hour, how long is it gonna take to charge the battery? So um, just again, I'm looking down at my calculator. So um, let's say you get home with 20% and you want to leave with 100%. That's 80% of the battery and divide that by two, it's gonna take you 40 hours. So that is a long time. Um, yeah, there's absolutely no way you can get home and uh, and hope to be able to leave with a full battery um, for quite some time charging on a three pin. But a more realistic scenario might be like commuting to work, for example. So I've worked out a couple of examples. Let's think of this option A, your daily commute is 25 miles each way to work um, and 25 back. So 50 miles round trip. Now, if you started on a Monday morning with 100% battery and you are going to use... Um, 50 miles of your range so assuming that you get two miles per one percent you're going to lose 25 percent of your battery on day one and then overnight you might plug in say you get home at 6 p.m and you're able to charge till 6 a.m and that will get you two percent per hour so it might get you close to 24 25 percent which means you've recovered the usage that you had during the day. So if your round trip was 50 miles a day, um, working out at 250 miles a week, and uh, that's a thousand miles a month, you could actually technically do that using the three pin plug, um, which is actually quite surprising. So you could do a 12,000 mile year and uh, charge at home on a three pin plug and never have an issue. Now the problem will come up where you have a longer trip. So let's consider option B, 50 miles each way your commute. And again, I'm doing this on the basis of the assumption that each percent of your battery gets you two miles. So that's assuming that Polestar's total range is only 200 miles. So this is quite a, a worst case scenario for sort of cold winter weather. Um, some people get even worse than this perhaps, but um, my experience has been, been around 200 miles a total range. So look at option B with a round trip of 100 miles, 50 miles each way. This will use 50% of your battery um, per day. Um, and then you'll top up for 25% overnight. So that means you would start on day one. So say on a Monday morning, you start with 100%. Um, you're going to then start on Tuesday morning with 25%. And then Wednesday morning with 50%. And Thursday morning with 25%. So you can see the issue here. You'll be okay for the first couple of days. But the amount of electricity that you can put into the battery overnight is really limited to, say, 25%. And it will chip away that you will find yourself by the middle of the week not being able to do that anymore. So your options there have to be either that you charge at work or that you visit a rapid charger once a week. So say, for example, you, you did a 100-mile round trip every day. Monday and Tuesday, you'd probably be okay. Wednesday, you could visit the rapid charger on the way home. Thursday and Friday, you'd be okay. And then you charge again, plugged in over the weekend all the time. So yeah, you could do a 100-mile round trip Monday to Friday. That's 500 miles a week, 2,000 miles a month, a 24,000-mile year, and you could get by with a three pin plug at home and a single visit to a rapid charger once a week. So that's that's really interesting way of looking at it. It all depends on how much you need to drive. You could look at option C as being something like driving 200 miles in one day 
and then not using the car the next day and then driving 200 miles on Wednesday and not using the car on Thursday and 200 miles on Friday. That may be a worse scenario because it takes over 40 hours to get up to 100%. So that that isn't going to be particularly useful. But if you do a steady number of miles every day and it's say 50 miles, you technically could get by with a three pin charger all week and then just um, keep your car charging on the weekend. So yeah, I thought that would be an interesting, interesting way of looking at things. But definitely what I have established from this, this video is the, the three pin plug works fine, but it's very, very slow, um, which is to be expected. So yeah, I hope this has been a useful video and uh, these kinds of numbers are helpful for anyone thinking about an electric car. Um, it, it's not something that needs to be that scary. I think a lot of people are worried about having to you know, perhaps invest in these different chargers at home, but you can get by with a three pin charger. And uh, and if, if not, and if you are able to install a seven kilowatt, it's definitely worth doing. So yeah, please, if you could like and subscribe down below and uh, I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.